Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is January 3rd and this video is going to be me taking you along with me as I do a whole 30. So if you've been following along, you saw that I recently moved into an apartment with my friend Anna and she convinced me to do a whole 30 with her to start out the new year. And so if you don't know what a whole 30 is, essentially it is a reset where for 30 days you are cutting out a lot of different processed foods and focusing on eating a lot of whole foods, which is where the name comes from. And I actually did a whole 30 probably like five years ago now only made it 20 days, but it was still, I think just a really impactful experience because that's what first sort of trained me to start looking at like labels and the ingredients that go into food and just realizing that even when you can think a certain food is healthy, a lot of times there's a lot of really unhealthy ingredients in it. And so I'm excited to do that just to reset and start the year off strong. And I wanted to make a video on it just because I think these types of videos are super interesting to watch, just tracking somebody's progress and hearing about their experience. But the other reason I wanted to make this video is the last time I did a Whole30, I found that even though it was a physical experience, there were actually a lot of spiritual parallels and things that I learned spiritually through doing it and I've actually shared some of those things in different videos here I think the video on how to love reading your Bible I shared a parallel there and that's something I learned from doing the whole 30 and so sort of like I did with the video where I challenged myself to drink a gallon of water a day for a week and I share the spiritual parallels from that I wanted to make this video doing the same thing just being able to share anything that I learned spiritually through doing the whole 30 and then at the very least just share the whole 30 experience in itself and so that's what we're gonna be doing I'm just gonna be giving little updates throughout the 30-day period I'm not gonna vlog every single day but I'll share snippets of just the different meals we make meal prep grocery shopping all that kind of stuff and so we went grocery shopping this morning Anna created like a whole spreadsheet and meal plan and all that kind of stuff and so we picked up groceries this morning and then we're gonna meal prep today and tomorrow it starts so here we go. This is Anna. for those of you who haven't met her on my channel yet. And I also want to let you guys know that she just started her own YouTube channel. And the focus on that is going to be on faith and fitness. And so she's also going to be making a video on our Whole30 experience, just from a little bit of a different perspective. And so check out her channel. I'll have it linked up here and make sure you subscribe to her. But um, I thought it'd be cool because we actually just filmed this for her <laughs> channel to start off by filming like what we're looking forward to as a whole for the Whole30 and then what we're not looking forward to. So I'll let you start over there. So Whole30 in and of itself like kind of helps you figure out the food sensitivities that your own body has. Um, I've done it before and so I know what my body is sensitive to but over the holidays I did not listen to my body and I've definitely gotten off track on sugar and even eating some gluten that I just know has long-term effects on my body. So I'm excited to kind of reset and restart that rhythm of discipline um, with fueling my body so that we can be excited for the next year. And then, wait, so yeah, not looking, did you say not looking forward to? Not looking forward to. Um, there's always a detox period, yeah. and I get excited about planning meals, so that's definitely not it, um, but there's always a detox period when it comes to sugar, and so I'm not looking forward to that. Same, I'm gonna set this down because my hand's tired. Um, for me, let's see, I think, yeah, looking forward to just resetting food habits so i'm not like always reaching for sugar after meals and then last time i did the whole 30 i found that it really helped with sleep just as i was putting good food into my body i started to sleep better not like immediately probably i would say like a weekish into doing the whole 30 and i haven't been sleeping super well lately and so i'm hoping that by cutting out junk that that will help but then also like Anna said not looking forward to the detox process because I feel like the last time I did it the first week I was pretty foggy and groggy and just lethargic um, as my body was detoxing sugar and a lot of the other processed foods so the first week's not gonna be fun but we're gonna get through it right but it's gonna be fun optimism over here all right day one breakfast we got a little scramble here with some scrambled eggs sweet potato and avocado chunks lunch the roomie just made me chicken shawarma salad with cucumbers sherry tomatoes avocado and i am about to scarf this for dinner we've got some chicken apple sausage kale and sweet potato hash finishing off day one with a little banana berry smoothie it's a little dessert while we're gonna watch some tv also these smoothie cups and glass straws are on my amazon storefront it's linked below they're super cute it is Whole30 day two. I just made myself a little smoothie and then I'm about to make a salad as well 
for lunch. Um, but I wanted to share with you guys something I read in my Bible reading yesterday, actually, that I thought was applicable. So I was in Matthew chapter four. I'm just going to read from my little scribe Bible journal here, but it is where Jesus is tempted. And so it says after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus was hungry. I think that's so funny. It's like, yeah, he's going to be hungry after not eating for 40 days. And then it says the tempter Satan came to him and said, if you are the son of man, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so essentially what's happening here is that Satan is coming to Jesus and he's tempting him in the exact moment of weakness and in the exact area of weakness. But Jesus is able Able to resist the temptation by knowing and wielding the word of God. He responds with scripture. He quotes Deuteronomy 8 3, which talks about how God allowed the Israelites to hunger in the wilderness that they might know that it is the word of God, not bread alone, that man lives by. And so that's when God provided for the Israelites with manna in the wilderness. And I just thought that was interesting to read going into the whole 30 because it kind of gets at this idea of fasting that one of the purposes of it is that rather than turning to things like food and relying on those things even though we need them fasting trains us to rely on God and trust him to provide for us and even though with whole 30 I'm not like fasting from food I'm still eating in cutting out certain types of foods like sort of the comfort foods or the sugary processed foods I really feel like there's going to be sort of that same opportunity to rely on God more and hear from him more clearly and to turn to him in sort of those moments of cravings when I want to turn to junk food and I can't and so I wanted to share that with you guys and we'll see when the next update is finishing off day two with homemade chicken tortilla list soup made by Anna and kombucha in a wine glass the best way to do life whole 30 day four it's dinner time and we are about to feast Anna and I decided that Thursdays are gonna be roomy nights and so I feel like typically we'll probably have, you know, it'll be like our night that we get our favorite takeout or something. But since we're on the Whole30, we have got, let me show you. We've got the chicken tortilla list soup that Anna made a couple nights ago and it's just got a ton of spices and it's super good. Guacamole with compliant um, plantain chips is what they're called from Trader Joe's. We're gonna use as chips. We've got some buffalo chicken, kombucha in a wine glass, and then I think that's it. And a movie. And a movie! What are we gonna watch? I don't know. Maybe a rom com. fry for whole 30 day 11 have some friends over made rice for them we're gonna put it on some greens it is January 15th, which is day 12 of Whole30. And so I wanted to come on and give a little update. I know I've shared snippets of some of our meals and little workouts and stuff like that. Um, so my update is that it actually has not been as hard as I anticipated. I feel like the first time I did Whole30, like I said, it was probably about five years ago. And I just remember really struggling, especially the first couple weeks, getting headaches from not having sugar and just feeling really lethargic and it feeling really hard, like literally dreaming about eating junk food and stuff like that and this time around like it really hasn't been hard last weekend we did a little get together just with my family for my niece's birthday and my sister-in-law made cupcakes and there was a moment there I was like man I really want a cupcake but honestly other than that like it has felt kind of effortless which feels so weird to say and I was thinking about it and I think a big part of the difference is that both Anna and I are doing it together and being that we're roommates most of our meals are together and last time I did it I was living with my parents and so I was making my meals but then I would be you know making chicken and vegetables and sweet potatoes or whatever for dinner and then my parents would have whatever they were having and so I feel like that's probably a part of why it felt a lot harder because I was seeing 
seeing all of this really good food that I wanted to eat and mine was good too, but you know, it was a little bit more boring. And so I think just having somebody who's also doing it with you and not being around the type of food you're missing has really helped, which I think is just a little analogy in itself, you know, that as we are trying to pursue God and seek him and look to live lives that are honoring to him, I think it's a lot harder when we're surrounded by people who are not doing that or who are maybe promoting a lifestyle that is contrary to that. And then when we are surrounding ourselves with people who are, like the Bible says, sharpening us as iron sharpens iron then I think it makes it a little bit easier and so um, those are kind of my main thoughts right now I honestly sometimes kind of am forgetting that I'm doing it just because we're cooking good meals that are whole 30 compliant and so it doesn't really feel like we're really missing out and it's been easy so maybe I'm you know speaking too soon and it's gonna hit me like tomorrow or something but so far so good Anna and I are both going to a friend's house for a game night tonight and I think that he's making tacos and stuff over there and so I'm probably gonna wish that I could eat a taco but I think we'll probably just put it in like a lettuce wrap or something and then we'll bring our plantain chips because those are like a good tortilla chip substitute for guacamole and salsa which those things we can eat so that's my little update I'll see you in the next one Day 13 dinner, we got fajitas and yellow mashed potato, garlic yellow mashed potato mashed potatoes. potatoes, which we're really excited to eat. Yeah, it's feasting time. Mm. We got sweet potato toast with um, avocado toast stuff on it, you know what I'm saying? Eggs and paleo bacon and coffee, always coffee. Chowing down on some food before heading out to youth group. We've got chicken salad with compliant mayo. I'm using these plantain chips to like scoop them. And then I'm gonna bring an apple with me. I'll probably make something more when we get home, but I'm kind of in a rush, so that's what we're grabbing for now. It is January 22nd, day 19 of the Whole30. I wanted to come on here and just share some thoughts and give a little update. I think the last update I included in this vlog, I was showing you my dinner before heading out to youth group. And then that night I had a conversation with some of my girls that I thought was kind of interesting because we'll normally have snacks during like the small group time. And so it's usually like a big box of chips and goldfish and all that kind of stuff. And I couldn't have any and I was like, mm. it was one of the few moments throughout this Whole30 when I was just like, man, why am I doing this? because there were spicy nacho Doritos and I love those, but I couldn't have them. But anyways, so I was just talking to my girls about it because they know I'm doing the Whole30 and one of them made an interesting comment. She was just saying like, man, I feel like I eat so much junk food and I'm trying to be better about eating healthy foods too, but she was just saying, I noticed that I always get a craving for something sweet or something that is more like junk foody towards the afternoon and she was saying she would ride her bike to 7-Eleven to get like these trolley eggs like the gummy worm egg type things and she said that she would always has this really strong craving for it but then whenever she gets it she doesn't actually really enjoy it while she's eating it and then afterwards she never feels good but she was like but then why do i always still crave it if i don't actually enjoy it and i don't feel good afterwards yet i still feel this compulsion almost to go get it in the afternoons and i just thought that was so interesting because i really that resonated with me too i feel like obviously it's good to be able to enjoy non-healthy foods or you know junk food or treats or whatever but I just feel like when I eat that regularly or like compulsively obviously off the whole 30 I feel like that's totally true that oftentimes it sounds good and you have this craving or this desire for it but then as you're eating it, it's not actually as satisfying as you imagined it being and then you don't feel good afterwards whereas if you were to reach for something healthy like smoothie that I made myself just now as a little snack before tonight that doesn't always sound good like you want something that's like mm, better than that um, but then you feel good while you're drinking it and then afterwards at least for me I know I just feel a lot more awake and alive when I'm putting healthy food into my body and I just thought that was an interesting thought and sort of parallel when it comes to sin because I think that that is exactly how sin presents itself that you know it seems like it's gonna be satisfying and good and feel good or whatever the case may be but it doesn't actually bring about good and it leaves us feeling empty and we don't feel good afterwards and so sin is really this false promise of 
satisfaction that really doesn't bring us satisfaction. It actually steals from us. Whereas choosing to turn from sin and to choose to walk in the way that God has laid out for us, that might not always sound appealing in the moment, but it ultimately brings about life and satisfaction because that is how God designed us to live. And so again, obviously totally okay to not always eat perfectly healthy. That's not what I'm saying at all, but at least in terms of that analogy of how it applies to sin, I just thought that was an interesting little takeaway. So we made Whole30 compliant brownies. These have bananas, almond butter, co cocoa powder, and cinnamon. They taste very healthy, but they're still kind of hitting the spot. And then we've got some plantain chips and guac. Surprise, surprise. Little Monday night spread. Having a little girls night and Anna just made Brussels sprouts with the aioli. What's in it? You literally just said. Uh, it's a chipotle lime mayo. That's Whole30 compliant. Um, apple cider vinegar, yeah. lime, paprika, salt, pepper. Yum. And then plantain chips and guac. We probably had this in this video like 20 times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> day 30 we made it honestly this feels a little bit anticlimactic because I just feel like it wasn't as hard as I thought it was gonna be at least not compared to when I did it five years ago but like I said before I think my food habits outside of the whole 30 were a lot more healthy now than they were five years ago and so I think that just really goes to show that we can change the things we crave based off of the habits we make. And so when we choose healthier things and we train ourselves to choose healthier things, it becomes easier than to in turn crave those healthier things. Not that by any means we always crave healthy things, but I definitely think there are spiritual implications for that. Like I talked about in my how to love reading the Bible video, I think that oftentimes it starts with that discipline of choice and then the emotion or the cravings, if you will, will follow. So I don't even really know how many clips I took throughout these past 30 days, but even when I wasn't doing a lot of talking clips, I tried to show snippets of my food here and there and just do a couple days in a row where I was showing you the different meals I ate. I didn't always remember to get every single meal throughout the day, and so I just kind of showed what I remembered to grab, but hopefully that at least gave you a good idea of the types of food I was eating for Whole30. And my plan going forward is to eat mostly the same as my Whole30 habits during the weekdays at least with some minor adjustments like for whole 30 you can't have oats or grains and i definitely plan on having oat milk and like my matcha lattes and stuff like that on a regular basis and then also probably some of those healthy grains as well but for the most part i want to keep up the healthy habits and that was really the whole idea of this was to reset those habits so that it was easier to then maintain those um but yeah healthier during the week and then probably more lenient on weekends and like social gatherings and stuff like that but i I definitely feel less bloated and just more energy and better overall eating this way and so I do want to try to make it more of a lifestyle so I do think the whole 30 is a really helpful thing to do if you are wanting to sort of do that reset in that way and then also a lot of people do it to try to identify different food allergies and so that's another reason I'd recommend doing it the idea is to cut out a bunch of things and slowly reintroduce so you can identify maybe what foods are causing issues but anyways we made it i still have to eat dinner later today i've got a smoothie over there as another little snack um but we're very close to the finish line i am going to come on tomorrow and do results so i did weigh myself and also take measurements at the beginning of the 30 days and i'm going to check in and see how those compare now i think it's definitely healthy not to focus so much on the numbers and the weight and all that kind of stuff but i do think it's a helpful thing to do if it's not something you're checking all the time just as sort of a reference point to be able to see what progress was made and so i will report back on that tomorrow so we'll see how that goes we're officially done with the whole 30 it's my first day off of it got my oat milk matcha latte mm. and all is right in the world I wanted to come on here and close out with the results of the Whole30. I wanted to wait until it was completely done and then 
weigh myself and take my measurements today because I did it also the day before I started the Whole30. Essentially, throughout the whole Whole30, I lost six pounds, um, but it was actually really crazy because within the first week, the first seven days, I actually dropped seven and then it kind of evened back out and persisted at about six for the rest of the whole 30. Um, and then I'm down about an inch on all my measurements. Also, I have to say that that's pretty much without working out. I think that in the entire month of January, which was basically when I was doing the whole 30, I worked out maybe five times just because things have been so hectic between working my full-time job content and then getting the apartment all set up. And so that's pretty much strictly just from changing eating habits. Um, and I think I've just noticed it most in feeling less bloated and feeling like my clothes fit better and I just feel more comfortable in them. And that is what's most important to me beyond any sort of numbers. And so I'm excited to just keep up those habits for the most part for that sake of feeling less bloated, more comfortable, and just overall better. But anyways, that was my Whole30 journey. I hope that you enjoyed following along with it. Stay tuned tuned for more content on apartment updates and decor. We've got an apartment tour coming probably in like a month or more because it just takes some time. Um, but then I also have some Christian dating content, a couple videos on that coming up for February. And then we'll be starting the next Bible study with me series in a couple weeks as well. So all that's coming up. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and then also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already so that you don't miss those videos coming. And then comment down below letting me know if you've ever done a Whole30 before and if you did, what your experience was like. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.